kabaka! Kamusta kayo dyan? I'm Ellie Ranchera from Bayanova and welcome to our newest segment which is Kabaka Knowledge. So, sa segment po namin ito, we aim to share with you added information po sa pagbabaka. So, it will help you um, know kung ano ba yung dapat natin gawin, how it will help you, and how it will help your farm. Okay, bye! <laughs> So for today's Kabaka Knowledge topic, mga Kabaka, we will be talking about intensive breeding program. So for you guys na nagpa-follow sa aming Facebook page, you know, you see us posting about intensive breeding program a lot. So for today's video, we're going to be talking to our Chief Technical Officer, Mr. Alfonso Serrano, to, you know, to understand what it is about, di ba? Para dagdag ka o alaman natin yan. So punta natin siya. Hi, Alfonso! Hello. Sorry for um, disturbing you, but we just want to know more about our intensive breeding program. Because we mentioned it a lot on our Facebook page, but for them to understand more what it is, how it will benefit them, how it will benefit the farm, and you know, okay. But let's start first with what it is. What is intensive breeding program? Uh, well, intensive breeding program is it's about of timing. It's about how many cows you get pregnant in less time and consuming less resources, right? Because if you compare with uh, natural heat or um, uh, insemination doing conventional or using bulls, you will get, you probably will get good pregnancy rates, but in a long period, okay. right? In that long period, you spend a lot of food, of labor, etc. And um, there's a concept that is open days. Yeah. Open days is the period between the calving and until the cow gets pregnant, pregnant again. Okay. So the intensive breeding program what it looks for is to get the, the cow pregnant as soon as possible after calving, right? To, the re, to reduce the open days as much as we can. All right. So, oh yeah, one of the benefits, nah, okay, I will mention it to them first. You can, oh, not yet. But yeah, one of the benefits, like what Alfonso is saying, is we reduce po natin yung open days. So ang intensive breeding program, one of its benefits is to reduce open days, meaning from the time na nanganak yung baka natin up until the time na mabuntis ulit siya. So sa ibang farms, minsan yung open days nila or mga days na hindi na pa-pregnant yung cow, minsan one year, nagugulat kami. So with the intensive breeding program, itatry po natin yun i-reduce. So usually nga, right? So usually Alfonso, right? It's at least 30, 45 days from last calving. That's the ideal period. Well, 45 days after calving, we can check we can check the cow already after um, for um, via ultrasound. Right? Via ultrasound, yeah. So we can know if the cow has any abnormality, how are the ovaries, if it's normal or not. Yeah. And then that's the time that we decide if the cow goes for intensive breeding or not. So it's an, an average 45 days. Um, the, earliest the earliest day for doing ultrasound and day zero of the intensive breeding program. Okay. That should be the start of the breeding season. Okay, so yeah, you can do that first while I explain to them what you said. Okay, so what Alfonso was trying to say, mga kabaka, is because um, madaya po nang tatanong rin sa amin, kailan pa da, ah, pwede na ba, like after calving, pwede na ba siya i-breed ulit? So, yung sila sabi ni Alfonso is, as early as 45 days, after last calving or after last ng mga anak, pwede na rin siya natin i-check if pwede na siya to breed. So, yung ginagawa po namin is we check through the ultrasound. Yung sinasabi ni Alfonso is um, as early as 45 days after last calving ng baka, we can check if pwede na siya um, to breed using the ultrasound examination, uh, ult ultrasound machine. Kasi what we see there, means may mga instances sa, sa ultrasound machine, nakikita na parang, ah, okay, mayroon pang fluids yung bakang to. What do you call the fluids? Like, after calving, right? We check that. Uh, and then, because usually 45 days after last calving, we check through the ultrasound. And then sometimes we see some abnormalities. Can be, um, endometritis, can be pyometra, uh, can be a follicular cyst, mm -hmm. can be a luteal cyst. There are so many things that we can find inside the cows. Using? Uh, using the ultrasound. And if we subject those animals to breeding, of course they will not get pregnant, right? Yes. And they will not go in heat if they are using a conventional breeding program. Yeah, which is waiting for them to be in heat. To be in heat, but yeah. especially in Brahman first, yeah, you, you can find many abnormalities, but also um, they don't express the heat that easily because it's the breed. The breed don't express heat easily because of the heat, because of the genetics, etc. So the best alternative is to induce them to go in heat and decide when we want to do the breeding. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
Okay, so we got it. All right. Thank you, Alfonso. So what he was trying to say? No, please don't eat that. What he was trying to say, mga kabaka, is yun nga, maraming possible abnormalities sa reproductive tract na hindi natin basta-basta makikita without the ultrasound machine. So, yun nga, usually after calving, after mga anak ng baka, minsan nagkakaroon pa yung metra, follicular cyst. So, it hinders them or it stops them from getting pregnant or showing signs of heat. So, at least, pag nakita na natin to, ah, okay, malalaman natin kung ano yung tamang treatment for that para ma-prepare natin siya for her next breeding um, season. So, ayun mga kabaka, yun yung one of the benefits um, of doing the intensive breeding program which is yun nga, to shorten yung open days. Open days meaning um, from last calving up until dun sa time na magiging pregnant siya ulit. So, kung usapan ulit natin mamaya si Alfonso, medyo busy pa sa farm to know more about um, kung ano yung mangyayari if hindi tayo mag... Um, kung ma-prolong yung open days natin sa farm or what it really happens if uh, hindi tayo mag-intensive breeding program or if it's really for you, di ba? So, maya-maya yan. Hi, Alfonso! We're back! <laughs> so, we just want to ask is what happens or what the, what are the effects if open days are prolonged in a farm? Well, if open days are prolonged, um, there's no productivity, right? If you don't get the, pregnant, the cow pregnant as soon as possible, you're spending a lot of resources. Right? Resource, resources meaning in labor, in feeds. Yeah, and, and time. And it's, time. The, it's the cost of opportunity, what you are not earning in a specific time, right? So because the, the potential of the cow is to give a calf a year, and if you're getting one calf every two years, then you're losing one calf. Yeah, right? for, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the cost of opportunity plus the cost of all the expenses in your farm. So that's why with the intensive breeding program, you need to look for um, a quick pregnancy after the calving, if the cow is normal, through FTI, through conventional AI, or through a bull. But the cow needs to get pregnant. And the easiest way is using heat induction and ovulation induction and fixed time AI, where we decide when we want uh, the cow to be inseminated. Yeah, but so we can take this in a literal sense that, sense that Time is gold yeah. in cattle farming because for, uh, for you to maximize the one calf per cow per year, you have to yeah get them pregnant. And the easiest way, like what you said, is to use the heat the induction and ovulation. and ovulation, which is what we do in fixed time artificial insemination. That's actually what we are doing right now. Yeah, that's actually what we're doing right now in Christmas Livestock Farm in Pidikilocos Norte. Okay, so Alfonso... Um, Okay, so okay, continue first. Okay, there. Um, so, uh, with that, is intensive breeding program for everyone? Um, unfortunately, no. You need some requirements as recording, basic recording, uh, some basic facil facilities, uh, staff in the farm, um, and nutrition is the most important factor. Because the cow needs to be in an acceptable body condition score after calving for the ovaries to react to the treatment. Mm -hmm. If the ovaries they don't show any structures, uh, any visible structures of follicular development or ovulation, the treatment most likely will not be effective. Mm -hmm. So nutrition is, um, is a factor, yeah. All right, so for those, so you're saying that for those who won't qualify yet to do the intensive breeding program, uh, what they have to secure first, at least for their farm, is nutrition first, yeah. at least. And the basic facilities, management, all those things. Correct, yeah. All right. Okay, so at least now they understand more what intensive breeding program is. That it's not for everyone, unfortunately, yet. But you can still do something with your available resources, right? Yeah. Okay, so approved. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Alfonso, for um, adding knowledge to our kabakas. All right, so we will know, what else do you want to know more of mga kabaka? That what, what we do or in cattle farming, let us know. Comment down below on our Facebook page or on our comment section here on our YouTube channel. This video was able to help you understand more about what we do here in Bayanova or if not, at least uh, what you can do with your available resources at the farm. So this is Ellie Ranchero and goodbye mga kabaka. Stay safe. All right, the cow's going out. Bye.
Obrigado.